Okay, awesome. Traders, thanks so much for having me. Uh, always good to be back here. And thanks so much for, for sticking around and hanging out. Uh, I've looked through the, uh, the agenda of the various speakers that have been presenting throughout this event. And man, some really, really incredible speakers. So really honored to be here and and certainly uh, enthusiastic about today's presentation as well. And so thanks for being here with us. Uh, first off, my name is Jim Simmons. I'm with RKI and Neural Street Trading Academy. Uh, think of uh, Neural Street as the academy, of course. And RKI is the development leg of our company. So developing algos and indicators and some really neat stuff that we're going to show you here today. So uh, really, it comes down to one thing is uh, ways that we can make money in the markets. And so that's what we're after here today, of course. We're going to look at today algos, algo trading. How many of you are trading on an algo now or maybe have in the past? Just uh, type a quick yes in the chat box. We'll get some involvement from everybody here. Anybody using algos or have in the past, feel free to chime in. Um, I realize some of you are probably trading futures or Forex or uh, stocks, options, lots of different uh, ways to make money in the markets. And so we're going to show you another here as well. Yeah, a lot of yeses coming through with algo trading. Good. Good deal. So uh, we're going to look at a little bit about how our algos are different and how we look to really cater toward designing algos with prop trading in mind. You know, many of our traders in our in our community are trading for prop firms and uh, and or are looking to trade for prop firms and funding companies. And so uh, that's really the goal is how do we protect our bottom line, our downside risk, and be able to scale profit in uh, in a funding account. And so that's what we're after here. And now, before we dive in, of course, we do need to post our disclaimer here. We can't guarantee the results. I wish I could, guys, really do, but uh, certainly that's not, not uh, something you or I can do. And so our products and services are for educational purposes. There's risk involved with trading. You know the gig. I'm sure you've seen this many, many times today already. So this should be uh, very familiar by this point. Um, so what is it that we want as traders? Well, I think it all boils down to making more money in less time. Now, that's why we got into trading, whether that was to supplement an income, to offset an income, to get, uh, yeah, not the Jim Simons, or I don't know how he pronounces his name. Um, I don't have nearly as much money as he does, <laughs> but uh, certainly a common and uh, popular name. So, but we got into trading to make more money, less time. The idea was that we could either make extra money, replace income, so on. Um, the unfortunate reality for many traders is that they spend more time to make less money and many traders are going broke. And uh, I think that's what all of us here presenting are looking to, to help traders solve. And so it's just a matter of what works for you, right? So what is it that we want? We want consistent winning trades. We want to be able to maybe day trade or scalp or swing or a combination of all of those. Yeah, lose money in less time, right? Yeah, we don't want to do that, right? Uh, less trader interference. We want less emotional obstruction. We want quicker and more accurate execution, accurate back testing, less missed trades. How many of you find a trade and you're like, Oh, that's really great. I'm going to get in. I'm going to get in. And there it goes. And it's off without you. And it leaves you hanging out at the bus stop, right? Happens all the time. Uh, easy and less optimizing involved. Settings and templates that are ready to deploy and strategies based on actual trading concepts, not just pie in the sky. Oh, if I connect these three things together and duct tape it and then put a few paper clips in it and then I'm going to hang it from a hanger off the top of the roof and then, you know, okay, okay, I've got an algo now. No, it's, we're not Frankensteining opportunities to trade here. We have actual strategies that actually work. And so that's, that's how we design everything that we do. When we look at manual trading, discretional trading versus algo trading, there's some advantages. Certainly there's some downsides and there's advantages with anything that we do, but the problems that we can identify with in manual trading is emotional interference, right? Um, sometimes we get emotional, we make bad decisions. Um, Miss trades, we talked about that one. Maybe it's hard to execute. Um, maybe you see something that looks really, really great on paper and you go to trade it live and you're like, uh, this isn't nearly as good as I thought it was going to be because I just can't get into the market the right way. 
or you're getting slippage or it's too tight of a risk or whatever the case. Maybe you don't even have a trade plan. Maybe you're here because you're like, I don't know what to trade. So I'm going to hang out here until something jumps out at me and that'll be the thing I trade. Uh, maybe some of you have done that before, right? Um, algos can be used for, um, not for options um, because, well, at least not these ones because they're a ninja trader. Okay. So ninja trader doesn't do options, but you can trade Forex futures or you could trade the S&P futures and so on. Yep. Absolutely. Um, market conditions change. There's mistakes. There's errors. You need to be on your game every day. As as an, a uh, discretional trader, you don't get the um, the privilege of having a bad day. If you have a bad day, your account shows it, usually, unless you get lucky, but that doesn't happen often, right? So why would we look to automate? Well, we can get faster speed, more accuracy, hopefully minimized human emotions. Notice we didn't put eliminate human emotions. <laughs> minimized because you're still the one that controls it, and uh, you're still the one that can choose whether to trade with it or not. Um, back testing and optimization, um, something that we can do quickly, right? Quickly be able to, uh, to back test improved order entry, less missed trades, system, systematic trading. It's a hundred percent mechanical. It can be good in a lot of ways. So when we talk about algos, why, why would we look at Arc AI? You know, why, why our company, why our development team? Uh, we are one of the largest uh, developers in the Ninja Trader uh, space, and we've developed uh, 55 plus indicators and you know a handful of uh, almost a dozen algos at this point and counting. Um, we have industry expert coders. The algos are bit for, built for trading, testing, optimization. You could trade the way you want. You could trade it on all markets except for options, cause, just because it's a limitation in Ninja. Uh, their performance stress tested, all of all of the things that you would want to see. But we're going to touch on here today some of the differences in the systems, and we'll go over those now. So let's go ahead and dive in now that we've done a quick intro on who we are. Okay. How many of you trade with order flow? Anybody, um, anybody trading order flow currently? If you are, you are going to love this one. Uh, what capital is required for futures? You know, you could trade with a very, very small amount of money. Um, you know, Ninja Trader brokerage or any of the other brokerages you can look at. Some of them uh, have very, very low requirements in terms of capital because there's micros that you can trade. So, so order flow is like taking, it's like taking the candle and dissecting it and finding out where are the buy orders coming in? Where are the sell orders coming in? Where is... Where's the market actually facilitating orders and liquidity in the market? That is order flow. Think of it like you're putting the candlestick under the microscope. You're zooming all the way in to find out what is it that makes up that, um, you know, that candle. Okay, so that's what order flow is. It's really looking at what's happening now versus what happened one candle ago, two candles ago, and so on. Okay, so it's all about right now what's happening in price and volume. Okay, so some of the previous signals you might have heard of delta divergence, right? You might have heard of trap traders, these type of signals. You might have heard of stacked imbalances, right? Many of you are familiar with stacked imbalances if you're trading order flow. Um, that's the idea that there's bid aggression or ask aggression. Basically what that means, I'll give you a quick overview, is if you're buying a car, let's say, Okay, you go to buy a car, the dealer has one price, right? They say we want X amount of dollars. And you as the buyer say, eh, I don't really want to pay that. This is my price. This is how much I want to pay for your car. Okay, so the dealer's up here with their cost. The buyer is down here with their purchase price. Somewhere in the middle is where that order is going to take place. Either the dealer is going to come down or the buyer is going to go up or a combination of both. And that is what's happening in the market every moment of every, every day. It's the buyers are saying, yeah, I'll pay that asking price. Or the sellers are saying, sure, I'll come down and, and buy your bid, you know, because I just want to get in the market. So when you have bid aggression, that means that the buyers are going to the selling price and they're buying now. 
They're saying, I'm not going to wait for the market to come down and facilitate my order. I'm just going to get in. So that would be a more aggressive way to enter the market. And so when that aggression happens, this algo can identify that and help get into the market to facilitate getting in. Now it goes beyond that, and we're going to take a look at that here in a moment. Of course, you can combine signals, you know, trap trader, delta divergence, stacked imbalances. You can look to combine different signals in order flow. But the real magic in this particular algo is that you can trade intrabar. And you say, what do you mean, intrabar? So what happens is instead of waiting for the candle to close, if we look at the right here, okay, um, there's a couple things. So let's look at the sell order. Okay, the market, the algo put in a sell order right here. Okay, got into the market right here. Um, if we look here, if we look on the left, we can see there's there's three levels highlighted here, right? And I'll change colors. Maybe we could see a little better. Yeah. So we got three levels here. Okay, three ticks where the orders were larger, right? Larger on one side. They're one-sided, best way to put it. But if we look at the chart on the right, that, that doesn't exist. So how is it that the algo was able to facilitate an order based on a signal that no longer exists by time that bar closes? Now, if you're familiar with order flow, you know it's all about right now. What's happening right now in the market? At this particular point in time, there was selling aggression. By time the buyers started stepping in, you know, they pushed price up and that bar closed. That signal didn't exist anymore. So what happens here is that the algo is able to facilitate that order intra-bar as the order flow is coming into the market. So by time everybody else gets into the market, this algo has already gotten in, taken the money and on to the next trade. And here's another example. You've got bid aggression coming in on this chart. What happens is the algo actually freezes the tape, identifies that signal, enters based on that signal so that you don't have to wait for bar close anymore. Because if you wait for bar close, not only are you getting in at a higher price, you're also missing the signal altogether. So it's all about intra-bar uh, order flow print coming in. And I realize some of this might be a new concept for you, right? So just uh, bear with me here and we'll go through it. Okay. So this is another example, froze the tape. If you look on the right, there's no signal. By the time that bar closes, there was no signal, but intra-bar there was. There was an order entered here rather than a bar close, and the algo was able to take a profitable trade. So this is great for those who like to scalp because you can get ultra, ultra lightning quick execution. It is not humanly possible to do what this algo does because by the time the signal's there, it's already gone and you missed it. Like it's you, you blink and you're going to miss it, but the algo has the advantage of being able to be quick. Okay. So unlike other systems, this allows us to control an unparalleled advantage. Order flow happens every day, every bar type across the board. And now we can choose multiple different ways of trading with this as well. You can do high frequency trading. You want to scalp high frequency. You got it. You want a day trade, just take maybe five trades a day. Great. Intraday swing, couple trades, maybe a couple markets, great. It all depends on stops, targets, bar sizes, and really how much you want to take. I mean, here's an example of the algo taking lots of trades. Now you look at this and you're like, oh, somebody barfed on the chart. And there's a lot going on there. Uh, you're probably not trading that much. If you are, then your, your brokerage loves you. <laughs> They're making a lot in commissions. Um, but it's just to go and show that you can do whatever you want with it, ultimately. Um, you can also use it as semi-automated. Now, what do we mean by semi-automated? Um, you can tell the algo not only which direction to trade, whether you're bullish or bearish for the day. You can also look at, well, what if the market's coming into an area of interest for you? You know, Maybe this is an order block, or maybe it's a supply or, or demand zone in this case. And maybe it's, um, it's a volume profile level point of control, whatever, can be whatever you want it to be. And when you see the order flow stepping into the market, which is how most order flow traders trade, 
they find an area they want to do business. They know their direction. They know their location. Now they just need the execution. And that's where the algo can take over because as soon as that algo comes into your area, you simply tell the algo, okay, start trading long once you get a signal. And as soon as that signal fires off, the algo's trading and you've taken the trade. Market comes into an area you're interested. Maybe you're trading a breakout of structure, going short, and then you sell. And then the market's coming back up and it's crossing over the moving average. Maybe that's a signal for you. So you can use it however you want. The beauty of this is as soon as the trade is entered, it takes the trade and then it automatically disengages the algo so that you get to decide when you want it to engage again. So that way you don't have to worry about, oh, I just got a, a signal and, and a trade and now it's already taken another trade. No, you can set it so that you can decide when it's going to trade which is really great. Just tons of opportunities. There's money management built in. There's, you know, again, we kind of talked about semi-auto trading and and uh, can be used with discretionary areas or you can use it just in one direction or the other. Um, I want to really highlight one particular signal here as well because I've got settings for all these algos. What I've done is I've kind of picked some of my favorite algos. Some of the algos that are doing the best for our trading community where traders are actually getting funded with these algos. And yes, you can get funded with algos. It's a question that we get a lot is, can I trade my prop firm with an algo? And the answer is yes. As long as the algo is semi-auto and you're the one pushing and pulling the levers, telling it when to trade and not to trade. And as long as you have a kill switch where you can turn it off, then you can trade it with your prop firm. Okay, so many of our traders do, and they do very well. So that's why I've selected these. Um, if we look at some of the other signals that are available, one thing that's really, really great about this particular algo is you've got a confluence factor. Okay, so you've got net delta, which many order, flater, order flow traders are familiar with. And then you've got you know, volume, of course. You've, and then we look at delta percent, which would be, you know, percent net delta versus overall volume. So that's a factor you can look at. The real one that I want to touch on, though, is cumulative delta. Okay. Cumulative delta, if, and this is looking at the, typically, it's looking at the entire, the entire day of net delta. Okay. So it would go from, the market open and you would add up positive or negative net delta across the entire day across every bar and you're going to get a number okay the cumulative delta could be i don't know depends on what you're trading i guess on es it could be gosh millions or whatever anyway well, probably not millions but thousands definitely but the problem with cumulative delta is that it's based on the entire day well how many of you do your analysis based on the entire day when you're day trading three to five trades per market per day? Like, yeah, it's important, but it it really, the order flow that happened at 10 o'clock at night has no bearing on the market at 10 o'clock in the morning. Because what's happening at 10 o'clock in the morning is completely different. The volume's completely different. The look of the market's different. The participants are different. Everything's different. So why would we want to let 10 o'clock at night or midnight or 2 a.m. or even the London session, why would we want that to affect what our order flow is telling us right now when we're day trading, let's say, in the New York session or in the morning? So this algo, you can determine how many bars you want to include in your cumulative net delta, which is fantastic. Let me tell you, it will give you a lot of insight into the state of the market, whether that is bullish or bearish, but not just based on price action and not just based on even volume, but based on what the order flow is telling you right now. So this is what we call confluence signals. And I have settings that are available with this in mind. And that confluence is that Net delta has to be positive. Cumulative delta has to be positive over X amount of bars, however much you tell it. The bid ask percentage obviously has to be positive. The percent delta has to be above a certain threshold. So what this is doing is it's now taking it a step further to say, 
if your net delta is a thousand and your volume is four thousand, well then that's twenty five percent net positive delta, which is very important to know. It's it is to say that of all those orders that came through, there was over a thousand orders on the bid side that are above what was on the ask side. Okay, so that's incredibly powerful information. So when all of these line up, then that shows a state of bullish or bearish, and that is confluence. And when you see that, it's like all the stars aligning to give you really great market conditions. So I've got settings and templates that are available based on that, and we're gonna look at them here in a moment. But we'll look at some trades that actually took place in real markets. You know, we can see uh, this this trader was copying it across multiple accounts, took a sell order there, took another sell order here, based on what was happening with the order flow showing negative net delta, right? So that was the idea behind this one. If we go to the next one, we can see where the confluence, as we were just talk, talking about, when that kicks in in the market and you've got a you know bullish bar across the board, everything's bullish, get into the market, take a few ticks out, whatever the case, depending on if you're scalping or however you want to manage that. There it is again. There's another signal, right? Um, and then we get you know, a couple quick, looks like really quick entries there, a couple ticks or something. Looks like this is more of a scalping type of thing. But every time the market is all green or all red, the market is giving you follow through. Now, obviously nothing's ever 100%, but I mean, it looks pretty good looking at the chart, All right? So there's there's definitely an edge there and something that you can really run with. Um, here's another example. And I'm showing multiple of charts here and you can see when green, green here, green there, green there, red. What happens when it turns red? Oh, market's starting to pivot in here. Notice how in here we didn't have all red on either of these. Well, what's the market doing? Hitting resistance, stalling out, stalling out. As it's breaking to the downside, you get bearish confluence. Now, as someone, if you're a you know a trader that likes to fade the markets, you're going to love it. Absolutely love it. So let's take a look at it on a chart and let's look at results, okay? Because that's the most important factor, of course. Okay, so here it is in action. This is crude oil on a 10 range. I'm going to make these bars smaller so we can see the actual numbers here because I want to show you in action what this is doing. So here we can see, okay, we, you know, obviously you take stop outs just like anything else. This is real trading here, folks. Uh, but we see when the market goes all green like that and actually happened on this bar, when this went all green as a state, and closed, this is a bar close signal in this case. Market fired off an order, took entry, took target. We keep going, all green again, took the order, took the entry, there's the target. In this case, it went bearish, took the entry, took target. It uh, tried to get bearish again, but this is where you as a trader, if you want to, you don't have to, but if you want to, you could say, well, we're trading into a double bottom, I'm gonna hang tight right? Wait for the next signal. Um, you can, or you can just let it do its thing and you get a stop out every once in a while. All green, let's go. And so you can see the power behind the signal, even uh, this one, all green across the board, even trading back into the highs. There was enough order flow to continue to carry that momentum through the market. There's another one. There's another one. There's a stop out. Stop out happens. There's another win. So this is exactly what this algo is doing. Um, in terms of performance, we have settings ready to go for you. And we're gonna look at several different algos and several settings, but this is for this algo, okay? So profit factor, yeah, looks pretty decent, right? Win rate, eh, doesn't look stellar, right? But we're talking about prop trading here, right? We're talking about how do, how do you get funded as a trader and scale profit? Well, when you see these numbers, maybe maybe it's not like blowing you off your seat, like you're knocking you off your chair. But when you look at the fact that this is from January 16th, day after Martin Luther King Day till now, 
and the max drawdown was 1800 and it made 8400 This is the stuff that most traders dream of, is being able to pass their evaluations without hitting the max drawdown and build their account. So if you're trading a common prop account requirement is make 3000 don't lose 2500 It's a pretty common one, right? Well, did you make 3000 without losing 2500 in that case? Yeah. But not only you made the 3000 you still never hit the drawdown. You got a funded account and you scaled profit enough to actually make money. Exactly, Martin. Low win rate, but good risk management. Who cares about being right? I don't care. Show me the money. Can I make money with this? Can I pass my evals and get funded? Yes. Cool. Let's do it. And when your equity curve looks like that from day to day, great. What about from a trade-by-trade -trade perspective? Looks good. There's some drawdowns in here, but as long as it can trade its way out of the drawdown, we're good, right? So good stuff. So that's one. That's just one of the algos. I got two more to show you. That's why I'm kind of flying through this. So excuse me for talking fast. If you need more time, we're happy to give it to you. We'll tell you all you need to know about all the algos and all that stuff. But for now, I'm going to keep cranking, okay? Again, we looked at problems with trading. One of the struggles is trading trends is fantastic when it's a good time to trade trends. When is it a good time to trade trends, you may ask? 20% of the time. So how many of you would rather sit on the sidelines 80% of the time because you only trade trends? Eh, not too much. Now, if you're trading stocks, cool. There's always something that's trending. There's always something that's bullish. Even if the markets in general are bearish, you've got something to trade. In futures, that's not always the case. There's only a handful of things you can trade unless you start really going into like ags and everything else. But, you know, there may be days where all the equities are flat and crude is flat and there's nothing happening and nat gas or silver, well, not that anybody trades silver, platinum, whatever. There may be days when there's really nothing happening and you're sitting there wishing you were trading while other traders are making money and you're wondering, how are they doing it? And when do I trade reversals or when do I get in on the bigger picture pullbacks? So we've got that problem solved with this one. So this is going to cash in on market capitulation. So what that means is you've got balance and imbalance in the markets, right? Balance markets don't just go one way. Balance markets kind of do this, which is why 80% of the time markets oscillate. It's because the market is in balance. That means that there are sellers, there are buyers, there are enough to facilitate orders. Eventually, you run out of supply or demand, and that causes the market to move because supply or demand is exceeding the other side. So but the point of the story is that 80% of the time, the markets are doing this. So how do you cash in on that? Well, this is what you're going to look at. This is called the springboard algo. You can catch massive moves. You can catch small moves. The bottom line with this one, it's based on price action. It's about the simplest algo that we have, one of them, and none of them are that simple in terms of um, development, but from a trading standpoint, they're really simple in a lot of ways. This will help you avoid that self-sabotage, account disasters, because you're trying to overtrade, because you're trying to chase the market, because you're trying to force the issue. We all do it. Don't tell me we don't. <laughs> We've all been there, done that. Maybe some of us have matured and we don't do that as much. But the point is this, the idea is scale your prop firm account without forcing the issue. Okay, so how does it work? So we have a series of lower highs on these bars. And I'm sorry, it might be kind of small and hard to see, but so we've got lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, and then we get a break of that candle. This is a really, really great signal. And for many traders, you might be able to see it. You might be able to enter. You might be fine. But there are a lot of times when, especially if you're trading smaller time frames like a minute or even volume charts, where you're kind of waiting for that opportunity to trade the breakout of the candle. And what happens is the candle closes right at its high and you miss the entry because your, your entry is like right above the candle. And so the algo will actually automate all of that for you. 
I can personally tell you from real life examples um, that this is going to work. It works great if you program it, sure. But you can also trade this semi-auto again. Let's say you're coming into VWAP, your daily VWAP, and that looks like VWAR, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Let's say you're coming into VWAP, market's coming down, coming down, coming down, and you want to trade long off of VWAP. I think VWAP's kind of sloping up. Markets are bullish. Overall, it's just a deep pullback, right? And you want to get long, but you want a little extra confirmation. Okay. You could use the HFT algo that we just looked at, or you could use the springboard algo that we're looking at now, or you could do both, really, if you want to. Um, but the market comes in and it's giving you lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, comes into the VWAP. You say, algo, engage longs. Algo goes, okay, enters the trade and off you go to where you can completely automate that. More importantly, you can back test to that end. You can look at the charts and see all of the signals and look at them and say, okay, which ones are working and you know which, which signals are going to work for me and how long you want to trade it and how big your trades want to be. You optimize everything, which is great. And it's really quick because it's price action. So here's an example of a trade going long. Again, we can see lower high, lower high, lower high break. And we have higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low break. So that's the signal. And that's really all there is to it. Very great. Does it come with the signals and bars I'm seeing on your chart? Yes, absolutely. It also comes with this momentum filter. It also comes with moving average filters. Some of them have dual moving average filters. Some of them have moving average filters on the momentum. Some of them, there's all sorts of different filters. Again, I don't want this to become a long drawn out uh, training event, but just to show you some of the things that these algos can do, there's tons, tons of opportunity. And when you hear about all that, you're like, whoa, that, that sounds like it's pretty tough. And we have all the settings ready to go for you. And then we actually have uh, training videos where we go over how to optimize should you decide to trade various other markets or venture out in your own direction or trade it on different time frames and so on. Okay. So don't let that scare you. Uh, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high break. There it is. There's a long setup. That's it. Can you use filters, all that? Yes, absolutely. Here's the short. Higher low, higher low, higher low break. You can set how many higher lows or how many lower highs you need before it's willing to trade um, short or long. You can also set based on the algo where the stop should go based on a buffer above the highs. You can also set a target based on risk reward. You could set a target based on ATR. You could set a target based on static number of ticks and you can optimize for all of these things. Not to mention, I'm going to take it a step further, this particular algo and the one that I'm going to show you next, you might have one trade that's 10 ticks. You might have another trade that's 20 ticks. And you as the trader have to tell the system how many contracts to trade. Well, when you're trading algos, you don't get that luxury unless you have this tool. You can tell the algo trade $500 risk per trade and it will automatically size the number of contracts. Every trade completely automatically without you having to do a thing, which is incredible for prop trading because you want to lock in your risk per trade. Not only that, we have high watermarks. We have max gains for the day, max loss for the day. So as you're trading said prop firm, if you're up $1,000 on the day and you want to be done for the day because you made what you need, great. Algo will stop trading and wait till tomorrow. It'll automatically do all that for you. And oh, by the way, you can optimize for that too. Incredible. There's so much you can do. Full automation on price action reversals. You could trade tops and bottoms. You can trade trends and pullbacks based on deeper pullbacks or however deep you want it to be. Um, you have a you know max number of bars you could look at even. Um, selective algo templates, high frequency templates, um, <laughs> dollar cost averaging on your positions. You can also block days of the week. If whatever market you trade does terrible on know, Monday mornings, you can, you can set it to not trade on Mondays, or you can 
You can also block time windows. So let's say you want to trade NQ and you want to trade it from 8.30 to noon, but you don't want to trade the open. You can block 9.20 to 9.40 on the algos, Some of most of them, which is really incredible too. There's just so much you can do. Um, here's an example of some trades here. Okay, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high break. There's the other side. Uh, that was higher low, sorry. No, lower high, yeah. Same thing, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, break. Okay. It does not interface with Bloodhound. Everything is built in though. So all the algo, the back testing, all of it. Mm -hmm. um, January and February, I'm going to show you. I'll show you, yeah. So cool. Uh, again, not just for algo traders. If you want to trade it in conjunction with your other strategies, which I would suggest doing, if you already have something that you're trading that works and you just need an entry opportunity, use it. This will, I'm telling you, this will work great trading off of VWAP. How do I know? Because I trade off of VWAP with this type of trade. Hint. Okay. Let's go to the chart. Let's look at that first. I don't know where are we at here. So this one. Yep, springboard. There we go. So this is set up on NQ. Anybody here trade MNQ? On a one minute, it's good to go. Notice all the higher low, higher low, higher low. Look at how many bars made higher lows before it broke. Yeah, this is going to give you lots of opportunities on NQ. Um, if we look at performance here, I mean, that's it's really pretty straightforward, right? Like that's, that's how the algo works. Um, let's go to the settings. What do they look like? Okay. So again, day after Martin Luther King till today, 8,400 in profit, 1,400 in max drawdown. So again, not only could you have passed your eval, you could have gotten to your funded account, scaled your funded account and gotten paid. Now I can't guarantee anything, of course. And yes, this is settings and templates and so on. Um, some of these were optimized recently. Some of them were optimized a while ago, but the settings are good to go. Um, these have all been tested. Uh, go to the equity curve. Looks like that. Do you have losing days? Yeah, absolutely. There was one today. It happens. You know, this is set to 500 risk per trade. You can set it to whatever you want. Um, but you could see, you know, how these are locked in at 500 average losing, 470, 472, 481. So again, this in this case, um, this is trading one to one, okay, 63% win rate, solid. Again, it comes down to drawdown versus profit. Can you scale a prop firm account with it? Okay. Let's go to the next one. This is the last one. And uh, I've got three different templates for you on this one. And we're going to look at a little bit differently in this case. So for some of you that are going, I mean, it's only like, it's only like a month, right? Like it's really not that much, you know, it's not that much trading, not that much, you know, not that much data, right? I've got something for you on this one, okay? Slippage and commissions, right? So commissions, you do have to figure. I do have commissions not figured in there, um, but all of them are profitable and um, you have plenty enough to cover commissions. Um, as far as slippage, so we have completely redesigned um, the brains of these algos to comp it's it's kind of like we have our own backtesting engine built inside of Ninja Trader for the sole purpose of being able to test and backtest on any bar type to where it's actually going to enter based on <laughs> based on uptick downtick. It's a whole thing. It's really complicated. Anyway, you can test it on any bar type, any time frame, and you can get extremely reliable results. Whereas, you know, we've heard from other traders, well, what about, you know, I've had algos that weren't really that, that realistic, like back test versus live trading. You're not going to experience that on these because they've completely redesigned the back testing engine. So it's when you optimize, you get good stuff. So it's great. Um, how many of you trade volume profiles, right? So Jeff's saying, yeah, we can order flow. We got you covered. Got you covered there. How many of you trade order, order um, or volume profiles? Trading uh, high volume nodes, low volume nodes, so on and so on, right? So if you struggle with volume profile trading, things like nodes and trends and 
anchor points if you're using static volume profiles or you know anchored VWAPs, which is one of my favorite things to trade. Um, maybe you struggle with trade plans around that. We've got you covered. So this algo will trade. Um, it'll trade auto anchoring volume profiles with auto updating volume profiles with auto adapting money management, specifically with the idea of trading prop firms. So again, you can day trade, swing trade, scalp trades, however you want to do it. Uh, anchored VWAP is amazing, isn't it, Jeff? I love trading that. That's exactly what this is. We have completely automated anchored VWAP trading. Mic drop. Okay. It, I don't know how they did it. It's amazing. Not to mention, it also has structure built in. The system breaks structure, makes new highs, pulls back to the anchored VWAP with standard deviations built in. It trades it. Look out world. Here we come. It's amazing. This is clearly, you can tell this is my favorite. I've been trading this strategy for probably two to three years manually, and now it's automated. And it's very profitable <laughs> when done correctly, of course. And no guarantees, of course. You know how it goes. All right, here's how it works. Breakout, breaking structure, the boss break, right? You've all maybe heard that at one point or another. Uh, pull back to the anchored view up. There it is. Here's another one going short. Trend change pulls back to the CWAP, VWAP. So what is CWAP? Um, I'm going to tell you here in a minute. And there's actually a video I'm going to have you watch that'll go over it. So for the sake of not wasting time, let's keep moving on. Structure break, pull back, trade off of the anchor VWAP. Oh, and it auto anchors off of the low that led to the break of structure. Ridiculous. Um, there it is again. Okay, Structure break, pull back, short. There it is. So here's my philosophy, okay? So we're going to, how much time do I have, by the way, David? Am I good till uh, 3.50, is it? Or what time do I need to be done? Just so I know. Let me know if you if you get a chance to chime in. Um, so here's my take on trading algos. Um, do we as traders ever just trade one strategy on one market and that's all we trade? I mean, unless you're trading order flow, the answer is usually no. Because you're looking for what? Three to five trades a day? right? It's probably the average. You want three to five trades in a couple hours a day. You want to go about your day. That's why we got into trading. So why would we ever expect, why would we ever expect an algo to be able to trade one market every day, day in and day out and scale profit every day, day in and day out on a prop firm, one market, one strategy? What? Why? Not when we have four or five different markets we can trade and, and 10 different algos. Why would we do that? The secret to investing is diversification. Why should it be any different for trading? So if you run one algo, run it on multiple markets. If you run several algos, run it on one market or maybe a couple. But the point is to diversify, to give yourself the best opportunity for performance. So rather than forcing yourself to trade on small time frames so that you can get three to five trades a day, why not look to trade three different markets on higher time frames so that you can get more reliable results? That's my take on it. Take it or leave it. Do what you want with it. But so these are settings that have been built on MES, MCL, MNQ. There's one for RTY that I'm going to show you here as well. This is for the month of January, the same time frame across all of these markets. We've got 3,300, 3,900, 1,800. Max drawdown, 487, 988, 472. So pretty decent, right? And you look at that and maybe you're not, again, maybe you're not uh, you know, pushed off your chair by that result until you look at the fact, well, what if you traded all three of these together? Okay, let's look at those numbers. And by the way, I ran the test uh, and compiled all of the orders and ran this separately. And the total profit was 9,100. The max daily daily drawdown. This is an intra, you know, trade drawdown. This is daily. That was the only way I could do it. Okay. The max daily drawdown is 525. So that means the worst day that you ever had trading these simultaneously from the 5th through the 24th was a negative 500 day. Not the end of the world. Oh, but you made 9,000 bucks risking 500 bucks a trade across three different asset, um, three different uh, markets. What does your PNL graph look like? Well, it looks like that day to day. Pretty solid. 
I'm just telling you. That's how I would do it. Uh, the only auto updating volume profile algo full automation on anchored VWAP and CWAP trading. I am going to go into what CWAP is because I don't think I have time for the video. C so VWAP stands for volume weighted average price, right? VWAP looks at the uh, the volume across the entire bar. Okay? The CWAP looks at only the cluster of volume for each bar. So it's looking at the highest volume, think of it like the point of control, highest volume for each bar, and it's calculating the VWAP based on that. So it's more responsive, more reliable, it's really great. The best part is though it's auto anchoring. There's no more guesswork on, well, where do I anchor my VWAP or where do, do I go to the high? Do I move it? Do I go to the low? Well, what if news came out? It's purely based on market structure, which is with the idea that momentum carries the market. Okay. So really great. Again, um, day of week filters are built into this one. Again, you're looking at uh, where you can trade this with a specific risk per trade which is really solid because all of these trades are different sizes in terms of ticks. Some might be 10, some might be 30 and everything in between. So the algo is going to figure out uh, what to uh, what to trade in terms of number of contracts. I'm going to skip out on the video. Yeah, I'm going to skip out on the video and let's go ahead and move to the end. I do want to show you the, um, the charts and the templates on this one and then we'll wrap up and do questions. Okay, so let's go to MES. Okay, so we look at MES. This is 10 days, by the way, loaded on the chart, and it's showing us what the PNL is for those 10 days. And you look at MES and you're like, oh man, 10 days, I didn't make any money. Well, that's not great, right? Well, until you consider that you made 1800 bucks on RTY and you made, that's HFT. I'm like, that sounds like a lot. And you made 529 on MCL. I'm going to move this over, sorry. So you didn't make anything on ES, but you made 529 and 1800, do the math. You had a great week and a half of trading. So when you combine all of these settings together, you get something very, very fantastic. The beauty of it is, I want to show you something. Before we were looking at the day after Martin Luther King Day, right? Um, this is from September 1st until now. Now, mind you, when I optimized these settings, they were optimized from January 5th to January 24th. And this is no BS. I'm not here to give you lies or nonsense. This is the real deal. I'm telling you 100% honestly. I optimized the settings for that time period. Then I went back and tested back to September because I wanted to see more trades. And oh, by the way, it still works great. Okay, so here is crude. This is micro crude. 13,000 from September till now, two and a half profit factor, 71% profitable. You're starting to see why this is my favorite. You're also starting to see why I use it on three minute bars. Let's go to MES. But I didn't make anything the last two weeks, but you made 5,200 with a max drawdown of 1,400 from September until now with a 62% win rate. And then when we go to RTY on a 325 volume chart, because RTY is great on volume charts. You made 8,900 without losing more than 1,800 from September 1st until now with a 57% win rate. What's your max drawdown? 1,800. What does your equity curve look like? It looks like that. What about this one? What does that look like? Give it a second. There it is. What about MCL? Let's go into it. Come on now, there it is. So let's do the math, shall we? So from September till now, again, this is uh, $500 risk per trade. Um, so let's go into it. So 13,259, remember you're running all three of these because why wouldn't you? There are three different markets plus what did we make on this one? 52.31, and what did we make on RTY? Uh, let's go into it, 89.10. So 27,000 from September until now. 
across three markets with a risk of 500. Now you can risk whatever you want per trade. That's entirely up to you. We can't tell you how much to risk, but that's, I'm going to tell you from, from a prop firm standpoint, seeing the prop firm numbers and how many traders fail the evaluation and how many traders fail to get funded and how many traders fail to stay funded once they get funded, I'm going to tell you if they had a trader that was doing this with a max drawdown of like 1800, they're scaling that trader. I can tell you that. Like that's the real deal right there. Now, again, I can't promise anything. I can't guarantee anything, but I can tell you what the best approach is so that you can make the most of your prop firm trading across three different markets on one algo and maybe even an, an extra algo for good luck. If it were me and I was running algos, I would trade probably five different algos on different markets because then you get to you get the benefit of choosing, well, which algo is going to do the best on this market based on what it's designed to do. CWAP is a trending algo. It's trading off of pullbacks. Springboard is a capitulation algo with a breakout. HFT algo is trading order flow with confluence or however you decide to do it. Okay, so you get to decide how you want to run it. Uh, I've got a link for you here to our website. If you go to the ARC AI website, and we have a bunch of free stuff that you can go in and get uh, bar types. Okay, so we've got a few free diff free bar types you can use in Ninja. If you're trading in Ninja, they're there. Just grab them, check out. That's our gift to you. If you want to purchase any of these algos or any of the other algos that we have available for sale, you want to use this coupon code. Okay, save 50% algos. Use that coupon code. You get half off of every single algo that we, we have for sale. Now, if it's already on sale, it's not going to let you use the coupon. So if you decide to wait until after it's on sale, depending on what the sale is, you're welcome to do that too. Okay. What does it come with? You get all of the updates. You don't ever have to pay for future updates or any of that. You get two machines licensed. Okay. So if you want to even license yours and someone else, that's fine. Totally up to you. Detailed user documentation. This is something that you would think is commonplace, but it's actually not. We have very, very detailed uh, documentation on exactly how to use the algo, all the settings, templates, everything. Um, not to mention we have AMA videos uh, done for every algo as well. AMA standing for Ask Me Anything. They're deep dive training on how to use the algos and how to optimize the algos. We have pre-built templates. We have Discord threads that you can join and join a community of traders that are also trading the same algo as you. And we even have remote installation. We'll jump on your computer. We'll install it for you. We'll give you a white glove service. But wait, there's more. If for any reason you are not completely satisfied, within 30 days, you can swap it out for anything that we offer, whether that be indicators or other algos, whatever you want to do. And now it's a one-time deal. You can swap it out once, okay? But if you don't like something, swap it for something else that works for you, okay? So that's our guarantee to you. We know you're going to love it and uh, we know you're going to do great with it. Um, I'll show you the discords here and where you'd want to get these settings that I'm that I'm using here, okay? So we're going to go into our discord. And so here we have different threads for each algo. So like springboard algo, okay? Um, CQG is great. Yeah, CQG is fine. Um, there was a, a member that posted it to me overnight, quiet, but morning's looking good. Yeah, this is one of our funded traders that trades the springboard and the CWAP algo. Really a great trader, guys. He's trading uh, funded accounts, okay, and making money with the algos. We've had other um, other traders that have gotten funded on, on their evals using the the algos as well especially springboard and cwap um more recently because these were you know kind of developed here recently but yeah tons of traders sharing you know different um settings templates best practices sharing their success it's really great so you'll have access to all of that and i will post the templates in these threads uh, as soon as we're done here so that you can go in and grab them should you choose to purchase okay um, to get to Discord, uh, what you want to do is if you go to the Neural Street website and go to community, 
and then you just click on that. But I'm going to go ahead and post the address in here as well. So you can just go ahead and click on that link if you want, and that'll get you to our Discord channel. So that our Discord thread, whatever Discord server, I guess is the word for it. So yeah, so that's what I've got for you. I kind of you know went fast and furious through that because I really wanted to bring you several different options that are really really solid. They're time tested. They're you know traders are really trading with this stuff and and doing very well and want to make sure that you get really great settings out of the gate. So um, so that's it. Whatever questions you have, I think we've got a couple minutes left to answer a couple questions and then we'll we'll let you get on with your day and. Um, of course, really appreciate y'all being here with us. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing something a little different, right? Kind of the out of the ordinary. And um, yeah, so we'll leave it open for another couple minutes to answer questions. So yeah, trials, unfortunately, we don't have the a way to do free demos or trials. Um, we just don't have the licensing uh, capability right now. So unfortunately, no, but you are more than welcome to join in on Discord and follow along. And as I mentioned, we've got the 30-day love it or swap it guarantee. So you're welcome to uh, to do, do that. Um, as far as there was a question on capital, it was $500 risk per trade on most of those. I think one of them is 300, anywhere from 300 to 500 per trade, 500 being the max. Um, how much working capital? Yeah, it's kind of the same answer. I think it just depends on how much you decide would be enough based on a 500 max risk. And then how do you choose which package? Uh, it just depends on what kind of, what sings to you, you know? Um, some traders really like order flow. Other traders really just like the pullbacks. Personally, uh, I like both, which is why I'm showing both of them. So yeah, just a matter of that. These are all built on Ninja Trader. Um, all on Ninja Trader. Unfortunately, they're not available on any other platforms right now. However, we just purchased a platform um, and that will be hitting the markets within the next 60 days. And then we'll look to get uh, all of the algos on that platform as well, which I'll tell you is going to be a game changer because the platform was built for hedge funds and quants. So it's going to be amazing for algos. It's going to be amazing. So that's coming. So. HFT is um, stands for high frequency trading algo. We named it that based on the ability to scalp very very short uh, time frames, but um, but it's an order flow algo. Yeah. So cool, yeah. And like I say, I think the best approach if you're an algo trader is to trade multiple algos. I, I don't of all of the the best algo traders that I've talked to, they all use multiple. They all use multiple. Yeah. So as far as the cost, um, what you want to do is go to um, go to ARC website, and I'm going to go to the shop here, and I'll paste the link so that you can check them out. They're all various different prices depending on what you get, but uh, the coupon is let me go back here again. Just going to be save fifty percent algos. So I'll type that in here again. 50% all goes, use that coupon code and that'll get you 50% off anything if it's not already on sale. So good stuff. Awesome. Thanks so much. Traders really, really glad to be here with you. If you need anything, you are more than welcome to reach out to me directly anytime. I'm going to type my email in here as well. Grab it if you need it and, uh, or just reach out to support and, and they'll kick it over to me too. So hopefully you enjoyed your time. I know I did always good to talk trading. Really appreciate it guys. Thanks so much for having me.